At Quahog Honda and Subarus, we got Hondas and Subarus. Hey, young world. I am Reese. And, and I'm his son, Maximilian. Joining with me today is my son, Maximilian. And we just came from the theater and we saw the movie Us. By Jordan Peele. A phenomenal, a brilliant piece. The movie was so good. Written and directed by Phenom Jordan Peele. Yes. And we're here to discuss it. Oh, yeah, spoiler alerts. Uh, apologies, but if you're watching this video, we're going to actually be talking about the movie and we're going to have plenty of spoilers about it. Indeed. Uh, some of you guys probably might have realized Us has, um, it's not only Us, but it's also U.S. And with that being uh, um, U.S., there's Get Out, and then there's Us, which could be maybe Jordan's Peel way of saying Get Out of the U.S., and that's just my, just my theory on it. But one thing I really liked about the movie was the brilliant foreshadowing. So I really liked the uh, amounts of foreshadowing, especially with the rabbits and stuff. Um, and since you know that this movie is about doppelgangers, obviously, um, you could, uh, you, you would know that rabbits are, they're one of the first species to be successfully cloned. And I like how they're, um, they're heavily foreshadowed in the movie, not just because of that, but, um, because the, there was one scene where the daughter, she was wearing a rabbit t-shirt too. And there's just been multiple signs of rabbits everywhere. It just... Oh, you know, I missed that, the scene. I didn't know that she was uh, wearing a rabbit t-shirt. I missed that. But yeah, it was at the beginning. At, uh, actually, at the beginning and the title sequence, it was, uh, the background was just strictly rabbits. They had yeah. they showed the cages of like, I don't know, several rabbits, dozens of rabbits. Oh, they ate rabbits, by the way. Those clones, all they ate was raw rabbits every day. Okay, Jordan Peele made the highly successful, critically acclaimed Get Out, which was a phenomenal movie, but it was more of a horror suspense to me. It wasn't really a horror movie. This was a straight up horror movie with monsters, movie monsters in it. But uh, uh, what the monsters were, we believe they were clones. That's our theory. I mean, they never really specified or figured out. And we believe they're, a clo they're clones created by a government project. Yeah. Uh, I, that sounds about right to me. One thing that really stuck to me is that are there technically 14 billion people on Earth? Or technically uh, 800 million people on Earth because we know that this was just a United States thing. No, uh, there's actually around 7.5 billion people on the planet and about 400 million people in it. I just doubled them. Yeah, you totally, you, you doubled them. Yeah, global. because they're doppelgangers. Oh, I see now what you. <laughs> I see what you did there. That was good. Yeah, I tried to. <laughs> I tried to correct him. Hey, you had something. Okay, my bad. My apologies. Yeah, he's about. Right. He's right. Jordan Peele is my personal hero. I love this guy and his representation of black folks. Indeed, uh, especially portrayed through the females. There, you usually see. Um, and I don't have any beef with any light skins, but you'd usually be seeing um, African Americans portrayed through light skins and people who aren't really dark skinned, but Jordan Peele, he seemed to find the most beautiful dark skinned uh, African women to do this these parts as the, um, as the children and the wife, so I really appreciated that um, in the movie, and that just makes Jordan Peele one of my favorite directors. He just, he's a good guy. And, he doesn't really portray African Americans in this movie as like bad people or hood people, as you see on social media. It's just regular families, like how we are. We're just a regular family, we're not hood. We don't have intentions to do bad things. Regular people. In the movie Us, my favorite character personally was Zora, the daughter of the uh, the family. I I really admired her character because, you know. As a, uh, a older person or adult, you know, sometimes we're really hard on kids and te teenagers, especially because when it becomes when it comes to teenagers, we usually think like, well, they think they know everything, but they haven't lived long enough to know much at all. And especially in 2019, today's times, a lot of teenagers are really disrespectful and what have you. But I appreciated her character because. She, um, 
she listened to her parents, which was kind of cool. Like whenever they said something, like when okay, when oh, she yeah, the scene where uh, she her mother told her to give her the phone, she right. wasn't arguing. She gave it to her. Um, she was just following all of her orders, all of her parents' orders. She knew her place. Exactly. Like when shit started to hit the fan and and us like Zora was like on it like her parents would say say she was running she doesn't give me the bat very cool characters what bat the baseball bat the bat there's one in the corner here, here. thank you she was just my favorite right. character Hold on. i really enjoyed the thing it, it, it wasn't she wasn't a puppet she didn't just like oh because she didn't do everything her parents like she wasn't like just some robot that like whatever her parents programmed her to do because there was an issue where uh, she ran track but like she didn't want it to be defined by running track. She like, she like, well, track is cool, but that's not really what I wanted to do. And her parents were her encouraged her to run track, but she was like, nah, that, that's not what our, that's not really what I want to do right now. But then when the shit hit the fan and she had to, uh, and her parents were told her to do something, she was on it. It just, I thought she was a cool character. <laughs> I don't know if it's because. It's a teenager who actually obeyed her parents. I'm not trying to throw shade at this child, but <laughs> but as a, I thought she was a cool character. That was my favorite character in the movie. I liked her. I liked the decisions she made. I thought, uh, as far as characters making decisions, I thought she made some of the better decisions in the movie. When, especially when it was crunch time and uh, decisions needed to be made, I thought she was she was wise beyond her years. I just. It was a cool character to me. Mine's had to uh, go to, my favorite character really had to go to Adelaine and Pluto. And um, I'm talking about Red Adelaine. And Pluto is the, um, is uh, pretty much the human dog, the sun, the, but the reverse form with the burnt face, the arsonist. Mine had to, uh, it had to go to Adelaine, the red version, the, the original version, because she was so well choreographed in the dance scene. She, and it's phenomenal that she could control that entire army of people uh, underground just just by, um, as a child, just by being aware of what she went through and how she was replaced. The, the traumatic experiences that she had to go through in order to be who she was and being able to control an entire army of people to um, wreak havoc upon um, the entire, well not the entire world, the US. Especially with um, Jeremiah 11.11. 11. So, which is, um, it's a verse in the Bible that talks about God wreaking havoc without the, uh, people being able to hear, uh, well, without him being able to hear people's cry. And that's pretty much what was happening with, um, with us, which I really like. And with Pluto, I liked him because he, him and uh, his doppelganger, well, he's technically the doppelganger of Jason, but uh, I like them because their relationship, it was, the relationship was like, it was good. They didn't really have the biggest of problems with each other, but well, they Jason, understood. Jason was like the first one to actually figure out his doppelganger. Yeah, exactly. He knew, he knew exactly what his doppelganger would be thinking because if he, if they were um, vice versa in the same situation, that's exactly what he would have done. So like, I really respected Jason because as a little kid, he was extremely intelligent. My thing is, all black women, especially the dark-skinned women, if you don't, if Jordan Peele isn't your hero, it's something wrong with your brain because he does a brilliant job of showing dark-skinned women in the best light. He chose some gorgeous black women to, uh, to be the protagonist in the movie and just showing how beautiful they were. It was, I was very appreciative of that. Like, like I said, my favorite character is the Zora because I thought that she was intelligent, strong, and very much beautiful. You know, there's beauties and beauty in all hues of nature. And I think, but some get overlooked in today's media. And I thought he did an excellent job in showing some of the darker hues and the beauty of the darker hues. One of the most brilliant things about Jory Peel and, uh, and his movies especially since Get Out, everybody is thinking about the double meaning and the underlining meaning of the movies. And the theories about, you know, these movies are not just surface, they're, they're something more about them. So the theory that we come up with is 
the uh, uh and us. Wait, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just wrap, I just unraveled this orange and it was uh, all tethered up. So <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, tethering was a major theme of the movie. But no, my theory uh, revolves around America and the U us being the U.S. Obviously. Who hasn't figured out the fact that us means uh, is a double meaning for U.S., the U.S.A., United States, or what have you? Well, my thing is, I believe us is a representation of, uh, you know, the state of America. I think that the doppelgangers represent our insecurities, and I think that I believe what they're trying to say is uh, we're letting our insecurities in America run us and we're letting them take over us. The reason I say that is because like, if you think about the doppelgangers and their interaction with the main family, if you think about their interactions with their family, uh, you know, they were like, they talk, uh, they kind of, they act out some of their insecurities, you know, as um, far as- Like how Jason, um, Jason's uh, doppelganger his clone Pluto was getting mad when J he was getting angry and annoyed when Jason wouldn't uh, successfully light the fire. Mm. He sure was. So Jason is a character. He's the youngest son in the movie, and his whole thing was throughout uh, the beginning of the movie. Uh, he's known for doing uh, doing magic, and there was a trick that he was trying to do that he couldn't accomplish. He keep trying, and then. Uh, even the sister was like, why don't you just tell us what the trick was so we can visualize it? But he can't get it going. He even told her, how about you lick my anus through oh. anger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so then his do his doppelganger, when they start interacting with each other, the doppelganger was like trying to get him to finish the trick and he could and he was getting upset that he could. So, you know, that I think that was something Jason was insecure about. And Zora. Zora, the daughter of the movie, uh, the parents were trying to encourage her to do track and what have you. They thought she was a runner or what have you, and they were, they thought that that was her future. And she was like, nah, she wasn't really into it. And then when she started interact, her doppelganger, oh when she God. started her interacting with speed. Yeah, when she started interacting with her doppelganger, her doppelganger insisted that she try to run from her and stuff like that. Oh, uh, the father, uh, Mbaku, <laughs> what was his name? Abraham. So, Abraham, uh, throughout the beginning of the movie, he was always comparing himself to his co-worker. Uh, his co-worker had a new car and he was, uh, was kind of, you can see he was jealous about that. He was commenting on it. Um, he keeps comparing himself to his co-worker and his, his possessions. We think that, uh, you know, his whole hang up was material possessions. And then when he started interacting with his doppelganger, his doppel the first thing his doppel doppelganger did was steal his glasses. Like he took something from him, like a material possession. It was all, it's all about materials. And I think that's what, my theory is that that's what us is about. It's like, we're, we're insecure and we let our insecurities take take us over. We let our insecurities run us and our insecurities are killing us. Literally. Literally, quite literally in this movie and I think that's what Us is about. There you go. There you go. If Max wants to wrap this up, you gotta get back to his game. So this is Reese and Max and- Signing out. Have a good day, young world. Peace, young world. <laughs>